Alright, so what happened again is this came loose. Uh, so this mount here was the one that broke last time. So we put that in. It was on the dyno. And, uh, and then it, uh, I guess it came loose. I didn't tighten it enough. So basically what we're doing today is uh, we're going to fix this mount here. So you can see how that doesn't sit very well. The other problem is um, this was the uh, plate that used to mount to the shock. So as you can see, it fits there. But then when you try to line it up with this new and improved bracket from AWR, <laughs> so. I smell oil. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Southdown Garage. Um, we are getting ready for February 8th event. So it's the first event of the year. Uh, big thing we need to look at is I've got steering geometry issues. So I reached out to the company called AWR in Chil or AWR Racing. Um, they used to make kits for these and they don't anymore. So I was able to rustle up some plates from them. So I wanted to give a big shout out to them and thank you. Uh, so basically I have issues with my steering as a lot of maybe you FC guys do. Uh, so what I want to do is put this plate on. It relocates my, um, the top of the shock quite a bit over and then it allows you to move this more towards the rear of the car giving you ultimate caster and that's the biggest problem that I have in my car is my caster adjustment is like non-existent so that's what I'm really looking for I just want to make sure that I have better caster adjustment because my caster is probably about a plus five or six maybe a six and what we want to make sure is the car is at about a plus eight caster so that with the uh, with the modified knuckles, we can return to center a lot easier. Um, I was talking to somebody and they asked me how my drifting style was. And they said, do you just whip the steering wheel and then take your hand off it? And I said, yeah. And then the last event, the last couple of events I drove, I was like, no, actually I can't because the steering won't return on its own. I have to always do this while I'm driving. So it's like, like so close to being done. Sorry, so close to being dialed, it's never done because there's more stuff to do. It's probably roll cage and all that stuff. But just getting it so I can have it consistent and I can get more comfortable in driving because that's what I've dealt with. For I've been doing this for about three years and I haven't, I've been getting better, but I want to try getting a lot better. So with the car being 100, like close to 100% dialed now, as soon as we put these in, It'll show you how much caster this gives. Cause I'm gonna, I have a place here at Fountain Tire and Chilliwack and they're gonna set my car up for me because they did the actual previous alignment. So they're gonna have a before for you guys and an after because that's what I'm looking for to show you is how much caster this plate gives you. The other thing is I've got some CX Racing coilovers that are pretty bogged out but they're not wore out like they're, they're not blown or anything um, the plates were from an s uh, the shocks are from an s13 and somebody's modified them for this so even these top plates on mine are pretty ugly uh, and they mentioned that too at the last time i went there so what i need to do is find out how thick one of these is and go from there and then get bolts and stuff like that for it. The other thing I'm also gonna add is a strut brace across the top because I'm having issues with my steering rubbing my exhaust manifold. And to be quite honest with you, it shouldn't. Uh, there's no reason that the car should move at all. So 
uh, that's what we're focusing on today. Making sure that we're dealing with our steering because that's important. Also, we have to put a fire extinguisher in. We need a five pound, so I'm going to grab that today. Uh, maybe I'll have time to do that, but I want to do the steering first and start by painting this and making it look cool. And then, um, then I'm going to go get another color of orange and paint over it. So I'm going to do a textured gray. Actually, yeah, I know a textured gray, and then I might go over top of it with a uh, with an orange because that's my other color. We'll see. Let's get to it. So now that we've got the car off the ground, we can go ahead and take the wheel off. And uh, then we can take a look inside about getting this shock out. Alright, the old setup is out. Now we can take a look at what we're going to need to make this work. Um, so we're going to put it over on the bench and go ahead and start pulling this apart. So this was a custom made piece by somebody to adapt this S13 to the S5 um, ARC7 FC chassis. So now we can take a look at the new plate and then I can go over and show you as well uh, just the difference overlay between the two. So let's go and check this out. <laughs> okay, so we've got this in the vise. I mounted this um, sort of vertically so that it doesn't squish uh, the mount here. I haven't put pressure on anything. This is how I like to put it in the vise because then if I tweak on this a little bit. It's not going to be the end of the world. Ooh, that had me nervous. <laughs> I remember when I uh, brought it to Shelby um, at uh, Fountain Tire, the guys there were sort of like, buddy, your, your shock is, your shock bolts are in pretty ugly shape. Um, and I mean, they're not wrong because this was sort of this was sort of put together for for somebody else to sort of you know set up make make it make something work i guess and then um not really worry about it after that so this isn't obviously an ideal setup but uh we don't have the money oops we don't have the money for change so instead of that, we're just going to reuse the shocks we have for now and then we'll show you how to make adjustments later once we start figuring out this car. So hopefully after these plates get installed, we will... Alright, so just to give you an idea, that's stupid. Paint it while you're working on it. It's a really good idea. So to give you an idea, what's going on in here? Oh, this is a problem. <laughs> oh. This is not gonna fit. I need a spacer to make this fit. Back to the drawing board. So basically what we're doing today is uh, we're going to fix this mount here. So you can see how that doesn't sit very well. The other problem is um, this was the uh, plate they used to mount to the shock. So as you can see, it fits there. But then when you try to line it up with this new and improved bracket from AWR, 
<laughs> so. Okay guys, so we've got this plate here. So what we've done is, this is the top of the shock. I had to cut the piece off. It's been tack welded in a couple places. And we just sort of tried to figure out what was gonna be the closest size, because I like how big this is, or small this is, I should say. And what I want is I just want to make it longer because as it stands now, um, this doesn't fit. So we've got to extend the plates out longer so we can mount this. So uh, something like that would work. And what we'll do is we'll drill three holes, uh, tap them, and then put the uh, bolts in. And then we have to take some of this rubber off. So I'm basically going to do like this. Just take from here over and then go straight up and down. And then that way we can put the plate right around it. We still have some of the other polyurethane, I believe this is, uh, around this. But then we can just make sure that the new plate goes over top of it. And then we can just weld on the back side a couple bit, a little bit here. Because uh, normally there would be holes to mount through. Uh, unfortunately, this stuff, not so much. Um, so, got to make custom parts. We're hopefully going to come up with a better solution. But this is like part one of our new... Uh, caster assembly build and we can only get better from here. <laughs> some holes and mounting this plate because that's looking all right. Not bad for backyard stuff. Saving myself tons of money. I had that uh, flat bar, a four inch flat bar lying around. It's not very thick but it's thicker than the top plate here. <sighs> I love the smell of burning rubber in the morning. Uh, we kind of need to hurry up and get this done. And what we've done now is we've built a new plate, we've welded it together, I showed you a little bit of that. Um, and now we are at the point where we have drilled out all the holes to 17 64ths. There is a better size, but all we have is standard drill bits. So 17 64ths, if you're wanting to use an 8 mil tap with 1.25 uh, thread pitch, is what Google suggests. It, it is a little on the loose side, so when you put it in, it does have a little bit of movement. Um, but for what we're trying to do, not the worst. I mean, this isn't a permanent solution. This is just temporary. But, uh, and by temporary, I mean a few years. <laughs> uh, so we just have to finish this up, put the plate on, make sure that I drilled the holes because like I don't have much room in here. Like if I put these, if I put these bolts in here, I do not have any back-to-back -back movement. That's why I went with the eight mil uh, because they're pretty tight. The downside is if I drill these a little off, I'm gonna hate my life. <laughs>
Okay, so this is our plate. Oh, sorry, we went. We want the low side to one side here. Then we get to see if I drilled these right. Oh boy. Oh no. I don't think I did. I think I missed. Good morning everybody and welcome to another day. Uh, we have two days before the event and we're getting closer uh, to getting this car done. Now see, I'm gonna show you what's going on right now. So we've got our shocks back together. We've got our preload set. It's tremendously shorter than it used to be. Like we're talking, the preload was set all the way up to like here, which ladies and gents, this is not your adjustment to make this taller. This is. Undo that, back this out. If you, or, or shorter. I mean, granted, I'm sure somebody wanted a little bit lower car, but honestly, if you're making your car that low, uh, compressing the spring by two, two inches, I think it was a, it was a, at least two inches. Wow. Uh, that severely messes up your handling. Like 100% messes up your handling. So guys, if you're gonna, if you're gonna adjust your, if you want your car to be lower and you just don't have the money to get something different, I, I don't know what to say, but that's not the way to do it because it's gonna tremendously affect your your handling. Uh, that might, may have been a, a mass majority of my issues. Uh, we're about to find out. Um, I still have to fix this. So basically, this shock, I've set up preload, but I, I can back it off easy enough. Um, this is the plate I made. It didn't work out so good. Uh, I got one of these bolt holes a little off and it won't line up. Now we've got, um, we had a machine shop do this one. Nice job. Uh, they, they really helped us out. I've got to give a big shout out to Ironside here in Chilliwack. Hey guys, if you're in Chilliwack, BC, and you need a machine shop, these guys hooked me up. I talked to another place. The guy thought I was like mental or stupid or something. I don't know what it was. He just said like, nope, I'm not dealing with you. And I was like, okay. And then I went to see guys at Ironside and they like, they came through hard. Like the guy's like, man, I'll get this done for you. I'll have it done the next day. And sure enough, done. Gave me a reasonable price. I really appreciate it, guys. You saved my bacon. And not to mention, it looks professional like that. Looked okay, but this looks professional. So, oh, one more thing is I've got to cut this. I've got to modify these so that, so you see the angle here. And here, uh, that's because of the plate. So when you mount that plate up, this section would contact, um, it would contact the bolts for the plates that sit on top of here. So I'm gonna have to do the same here and trim that off. So we're gonna start, basically, <coughs> we've got this other plate up here. So I'm just gonna put some Sharpie markers here and then uh, we're gonna go a little outside of it. And same with here, and go a little outside. And then, um, then we're gonna go ahead, and we're gonna have to do the same to the other side, because uh, once the plate went this way, uh, we were running into some issues. So we're gonna have to angle it, angle it, and then sort of cut down, swoop. I think we might, uh, I, don't know. I don't know, we'll see. So. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm not going to show you that because it's kind of boring and I have so much to do today. It's Friday. I have to go to the States, pick up parts. I have to go pick up my trailer for my buddy or my, sorry, I have to pick up my buddy's trailer because it's not mine. He keeps trying to sell it to me, but I don't have the room. And Kyle, I wish I could. Okay, we're back. We've done all this work. We got the 
one side in here I'll quickly show you so that's with the caster it's not all the way uh, positive but uh, you can move a little bit further um, and this is sort of how much preload we have so this isn't <laughs> sorry I did not make add this preload uh, basically what we went was we went eight millimeters of preload on here and then we l raised the car an inch and a half by loosening this collar here and backing the shock out so that you have uh, the shock go up rather than the tension go up. So that's what we did. Um, now we gotta go ahead and try to put this in here and hopefully my modifications to the top here work. I accidentally put this on upside down so I had to cut it out again just to fit the uh, bolts in there. And um, yeah, story of my life with this thing. Holy mackerel. Okay, anyways, uh, yeah, we gotta throw this thing back in there and uh, go from there and s probably have to push the, cause this, these caster plates are all the way positive. Uh, I don't think this, I don't think the shock's gonna fit in there like that, but we'll, we'll try it out. So we've got this set up as much as we can. We've um, gotten as much caster out of this. Uh-oh. 